How to effectively contain smoke and fire by limiting smoke and fire access to areas. Transfer of patients, visitors, and staff to areas of refuge, which requires identification of a safe refuge area and patient need during that refuge. For example, whether patients need portable oxygen in the refuge area. Also, staff must know what their specific fire response duties are related to their job function. For example, staff duties in non-patient care areas will focus on staff safety, fire containment and extinguishment, where staff responsibilities in patient care areas will focus on patient and visitor safety and rescue as necessary, and fire containment and extinguishment as appropriate. Staff must also be prepared to evacuate the building and therefore must be knowledgeable on appropriate methods of evacuation of patients, evacuation routes in their areas, and where evacuation maps are generally located throughout the facility. As staff at this facility, uh, you should check with your manager or supervisor regarding the specific details in working in your particular environment. Uh, it's really important that you should be familiar with this organization's expectation uh, concerning their approach, whether it's something like this RACE acronym that we were talking about or any other type of uh, buzzword or password or uh, keyword to help you remember what you should be doing in this situation. Remember, the issues that we have discussed are competencies that will be assessed during your regular performance evaluation. Remember, the regulatory body expectations for healthcare personnel during a fire situation are Personnel will know their specific roles and responsibilities at a fire's point of origin, which means personnel understand and can perform the elements of rescue, alarm, contain, and extinguish. Personnel will know their specific roles and responsibilities away from a fire's point of origin. For example, the prevention of the spread of fire to the staff member's department. Personnel will know their specific roles and responsibilities in preparing for building evacuation. And, while the following are included in the rescue, alarm, contain, and extinguish responsibilities, it should be stressed that personnel must know what specific code or acronym their organization uses to alert staff of a fire drill or actual fire situation where fire alarms are located and how to activate them, and where fire extinguishers are located and how to use them. While specific departmental staff responsibilities in fire drills and actual fire codes is outlined in the organization's fire prevention and management plan, all staff must be able to identify the location of a fire drill or actual fire. Your regulatory body surveyors will look to assure that staff is proven competent in these basic areas. See your workbook for a comprehensive list of personnel responsibilities as outlined by the JCAHO. The JCAHO requires healthcare facilities to comply with the National Fire Protection Association's regulations and have built many of these regulations into JCAHO standards. While many of these regulations impact the plant services department, some of the requirements are responsibilities of all staff. Any penetration into fire rated walls, wall assemblies and or smoke fire doors must be filled with approved fire retardant material. As most employees will not know what constitutes a fire rated wall or door, any staff member that sees a hole or penetration in the building should file a report with plant services to allow for proper inspection and repair as necessary. Exit signs must be clearly visible and illuminated. There can be nothing obscuring or blocking any exit sign. Exit signs must be less than or equal to 100 feet from any room door and must have letters at least four inches in height. Any staff member that notes exit signs that do not meet these requirements should notify the organization's plant services department for repair or replacement as needed. All means of access and egress must remain clear, which means that all equipment and items in corridors and hallways must be kept to one side to allow for unobstructed movement. Hey guys, what's wrong with this hallway? Can you please make sure all the equipment's moved to one side or put back into the proper equipment storage rooms? Sure. 
Thank Sorry. you. All departments, not just patient care areas, must have clear, unobstructed egress and access. And staff must be aware of the need to keep corridors and hallways clear when performing routine duties. Means of egress must be adequately illuminated and labeled, with exit stair doors positive latching and self-closing. Stairs should have handrails on both sides, with all stairwells clear of any obstruction to allow for rapid egress. Staff should report any stairwell lights or doors that are not functioning properly to the plant services department. Sprinklers must be unobstructed to allow for adequate water flow in the event of a fire. Therefore, all storage items must allow for clear space at least 18 inches below standard pendant sprinkler heads. This scenario was created to demonstrate improper storage of items in a general storage closet. Note that the manner in which we arranged items in this scenario does not allow for adequate sprinkler flow and provides a fuel source for a fire. The following are examples of how supplies and equipment should be stored to allow for adequate sprinkler flow and to reduce fuel source in the event of a fire. Remember, there must be clear space of 18 inches from pendant sprinkler heads to the top of stored supplies and or equipment in all areas of the facility, not just patient care areas. Also, staff should be aware that the JCAHO requires that patients, visitors, and staff are prohibited from smoking in any of the organization's buildings. If a patient has received an order from his or her licensed independent practitioner and this order is based on approved medical staff criteria for medical clinical reasons to allow the patient to smoke, the patient may do so. Remember, the room in which the patient may smoke must be well ventilated. However, unless there is a valid order, patients are not allowed to smoke inside healthcare organization buildings. Remember, the no smoking rule applies to visitors and staff, as well as patients. Staff should be informed that they are not allowed to smoke in any area inside the organization and must utilize designated smoking areas. As noted by the surveyor presenting the class in service in the beginning of this video, as personnel members, you are responsible for knowing what your role is related to fire prevention and management in your specific department. Dependent upon where your work is performed in the facility, you will need to know if there are any specific potential fire hazards inherent in the work process in your department, and how best to prevent and manage these. For example, in the kitchen the potential for grease fires is inherent in the routine process of food preparation, and staff must be aware of where fire extinguishing supplies are located, and how to utilize these supplies. Staff must also be aware that some equipment requires a special type of extinguisher to prevent damage to the equipment, such as halon canisters for fire suppression over the grill. Additionally, staff should be aware of all fuel sources specific to individual departments that may require shutdown during a fire, such as cooking gases or steam sources. Also, in the event of a fire, staff should know the location and who has been trained to properly stop the flow of medical gases in their department. Typically, staff must receive authorization to shut down medical gases, as there should be appropriate prior accommodations made to supply needed gases to the patients requiring them during the medical gas shutdown period. It is usually the responsibility of the department manager or supervisor to make this determination. However, all staff in areas where medical gases are utilized or stored should be trained to shut down medical gases in the event of a real fire situation when the flow of such gases presents as an immediate combustion source. Remember, the steps you are to take in any department in the event of a fire are rescue, alarm, contain, and extinguish or exit as appropriate. However, you will need to check with your department manager or supervisor to determine your specific fire prevention and management roles and responsibilities in your department. Your organization will be assessed for compliance with the fire safety standards during your JCAHO accreditation survey. Your 